Hey guys, um, moving on to lesson 7-2 composite figures. This should be a review for you guys. Um, I think you probably did it last year in AMPS or um, you might have already been exposed to problems like this um, because of just area problems and um, putting together different shapes. Um, in math class, I, one of your practice problems was uh, already one of these composite figures. So hopefully this will be a good easy lesson and then um, uh, your practice problems will make a lot of sense. Don't forget to write things down in your notebook as you go. Um, I have my notebook and um, just behind this tab, I've just been actually printing the notes and then I'm just going to write the practice problems down um, so that then I don't have to write all of the words, but I'm still doing the practice math problems, which are the most important. So I'll get started um, with the presentation. Maybe. Yes. And then um, I'll switch over to the document camera. So composite figures. Just finding area of shapes that are a bunch of 2D figures put together. So let's review the 2D figures, um, area and then of a rectangle and a square, and we know square is a rectangle, but length times width, or some people say base times height, either way. So feel free to pause and write this down if you don't remember it or you need a refresher. Um, triangle, half of a rectangle, so one half base times height or one half length times width. Parallelogram, um, again, just like a rectangle, length times width, except for we always normally for a parallelogram say base times height. And the height, just like in the triangle, is usually represented by the dotted line inside of the figure. Sorry, just yawned in the middle of the presentation. Um, and then area of a trapezoid which is just the longest one to remember, base one plus base two divided by two times height. Um, so base one in this case being 21 or the upper base and then base two being 41. The bases are parallel to each other, um, meaning they're two lines that never touch. So it's easy to see which two sides are the bases. Notice that the bases are also in parentheses and according to order of operations, we always add them together first before dividing by two and multiplying by the height. And then we just talked about circles. So I put that on here too, area of a circle, um, pi r squared. You can see me spin on a car, circumference two pi r, I roll with it, boy, I'm not scared. Area is pi r squared. Um, so composite figures are just figures that are composed of different 2D shapes. And so normally we just split them up, kind of like you can see in these examples, you split them up into easy to figure out shapes. So now let's do some math, let's do some practice problems. And I actually have the wrong directions on this first one, um, but that's okay. So for number one, this is supposed to be over here. I fixed it, but then I didn't fix it here. This one we are finding the missing height. So we're finding right here. So this is one of those working backwards problems that I just wanted to do too easy, let's get back into it kind of thing um, problems with you guys. So for this first one, I want you to decide, okay, what is the formula that I'm using? And then fill in what you know, and then solve the formula, just like we did with circles. Okay, so first step, what is the formula that we're using? Well, this is a triangle, so area equals one half base times height. Fill in what you know. So the area, 29.75, is equal to one half times the base of 8.5 times the height, which we don't know, so I'm going to leave it in H. Draw your line. So we did, what is the formula? Fill in what we know. Now let's solve the formula. Um, and I'm just going to use my calculator. Type it right in. Well, I don't need it for that point. Part, half of that is 4.25 times H, and then carry down the 
And then the last step to get each all by itself, we're going to divide by 4.25. Divide by 4.25. We get H is equal to. Seven. So the height, seven feet. I'm gonna put a box around my answer. Okay, next one I just wanted to review uh, trapezoid because I think we kind of forget them. So area equals base one plus base two in parentheses divided by two times the height. Write the formula, fill in what you know. So area is equal to 11.1 plus 16.4 divided by 2 times the height of 8.4. We know it's the height because it has that dotted line. We can also see that they put a square right here to symbolize that's 90 degrees, so we know these are perpendicular making the height. Um, and then we're just going to solve. Um, so 11.1 plus 16.4, 27.5. Divided by 2 times 8.4. Do this dividing first. 13.75 times 8.4. Um, inches squared. Again, when you're working with area, make sure it's all... Oh, you can't see it. My face is in the way. Um, make sure that your units are squared because we are working with area or a 2D figure, a 2D shape, two dimensions. Okay, now to really get into what composite figures are like. So these two, I already split the figures for you with dotted lines so that you could see exactly how um, I want you splitting up these shapes. And then soon you'll be able to just kind of do your own um, and figure it out. So for number three, we have two triangles. They don't have the same um, dimensions, so we're going to have to do them separately. And then we have a really big rectangle. So um, I'm just going to split it up. I like to just put like numbers in my shapes, and then I can kind of keep track of where I'm showing my work. So my first one right here, this triangle, a triangle is 1 half base times height. So area equals one half, the base is two, the height is three. Half of two is one, one times three is three. So three feet squared. So then if we do this other triangle down here, again, area equals one half times base times height. Area equals one half times three times three. Area equals one half of, well, you could do one half of nine, um, which is 4.5. Okay, last shape. Be careful with this one because you want to say, oh, eight times four. But realize that this whole side right here is the length and the width. So it is going to be four, but it's going to be eight, nine, ten, eleven feet times four. So area equals length times width. Area equals 11 times four. Area equals 44 feet squared. Then all you do is add them together. 44 plus three plus 4.5. So the area is equal to 51.5 feet. Good. Yay! One down! Your first composite figure. Yay! Okay, let's do the next one. Um, they get a little bit harder, and then I have one more after this one that is really good. Okay, so we have a circle here, a semicircle, so technically half of a circle. That's going to be important. I'll show you how to do that. And then we have a trapezoid. Um, so that kind of makes our life easy to just split it into two shapes. You could split it into a rectangle and a triangle, but you could just leave it as a trapezoid too. So this will be shape one. This will be shape two. 
So in shape one, it's a semicircle. So I do want to use area equals um, pi r squared um, for a full circle. But since this is only half of a circle, what I can do is I can put one half pi r squared. Um, because I already know I'm only doing half of the circle. So that's kind of helpful. Um, so then fill in what I know, one half, 3.14 times, we know that the R is only half of this, so 10 squared. So 10 squared, 100 times 3.14, woo, 100 times 3.14, and then uh, times 1 half, and we get the area is 157 millimeters squared. The other thing you could have done is done uh, area of the circle and then divided it by two since it's only half, but um, I just like to do it all in one step, in one formula. Okay, two area equals base one plus base two divided by two times height. So base one, 20 plus 32 divided by 2 times 14. Divided by 2 times 14. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 364 millimeters squared. We add them together, 157 plus 364. get 521 millimeters squared. Woo. Okay, I have one more for you. Find the area of this shape, this is our last one. Um, so there is multiple ways to do this, okay? We have two shapes here. We have a circle and we have a square rectangle, however you want to say it. So I'm going to show you my way, but there are multiple ways you can do this problem, okay? So the first thing I notice about this is because it's showing me right here, this is a square, because it has right angles in all of the corners, we know that if that one's right, that means all of these are right angles. So I know that this is perfectly cutting a fourth out of my circle, which is perfect. Um, I know that because it's going from the center to the edge, here's our radius. So I know this is perfectly cutting my circle. So what I'm gonna do to solve this problem is since this is a fourth cut out, I'm only going to do three fourths of the circle. So my area is gonna be three fourths of, meaning times, just like I did in the last problem, three fourths times, pi r squared. I'm doing three fourths of the circle. Three fourths times the circle. I'm only, I only need three fourths of the circle. Another way that people have done this is by finding the whole circle and then splitting it up into fourths and then adding three of them back together. I just think it's easier to do it this way. Fill in what we know. Times 3.14 times two squared. There's our radius. So 3.14 times 4, and then times, I'm going to do 0.75, easier to type in the calculator, 9.42 feet squared. So easy. And then our last one, or shape 2, area equals length times width, area equals 4 feet squared. So I'm going to add them together. Yay! Oh, you can't see it. Okay, so now I have some problems for you. Switching back over to the lesson. Oh, I'm all over the place. Where's my lesson?
I don't even know. Oh, right there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, I'll just show you the rest. So I have some practice problems for you. So one, two, three, four. Um, but then just a couple of things I want to tell you. So no lesson um, Friday because we don't technically have school. It starts spring break. Yay! Um, so I'll do the answers to these practice problems for you guys at the start of next lesson, which will be Monday, April 20th. That's the next time I'll see you. We'll hopefully have Microsoft Teams back by then, so I'll be able to do office hours, and you'll be able to show me your problems. So I can't wait. Feel free to email me with any questions that you have. Um, and you guys are doing a great job so far. I'm super proud of you. Keep up the good work. I can't wait to see you virtually, and I really, really miss you guys. Hope you have an awesome spring break. Bye.